Everybody, shut up! And action! Dudes and dudettes, let's talk about another Disney remake for The Little Mermaid. Uh, if you're looking for a brand new movie, you've come to the wrong place because this movie is quite literally an exact remake of the original The Little Mermaid animated film from like the 1900s or whatever that originally came out. Because this movie literally feels like uh, an exact copy and I mean it was just the same thing it was just reimagined for uh, live action so of course it's gonna be like that but why is it longer I mean you have the Disney animation it was beautiful it was amazing it was a really really good movie that we all enjoyed as a kid growing up the animated movie was only 83 minutes long yet this live action version is two hours so it comes to question okay so if it's an exact remake why is it longer? Like, while watching this movie, like, I don't even need to explain the story, really, because the story is essentially the same as the last one. There's a mermaid who's infatuated with the surface world where daddy says, no, uh, humans are evil, and uh, she saves the prince who falls into the ocean, uh, uh, makes a deal with the sea witch so that she can become human, trying to follow her ambitions, um, you know, wanting to become a human, but, like, I don't know why they would want to become a human. But in, but in the end, it's literally an exact remake, yet somehow they make it longer. And you can feel the length. I mean, like, while I was watching a movie, I'm not, but like, I wasn't complaining much. I was actually decently enjoying it. I, like, I, I had a decent time watching it because it was, it literally just felt a, like a rewatch of a film I haven't seen in a long, long time. Uh, though, obviously, a little worse, but like, it, it did feel long and tiring. And it was like, okay, I just want to go my phone on. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of watching. So, like, it does feel really, really lengthy and tiring to watch at the end of it. Um, yeah as for cinematics the cinematics were beautiful i mean the cinematography going through the ocean the cinematics of the ocean the cinematics of under the sea the surface world the cinematics were absolutely beautiful the visuals were amazing uh i don't care what people say i see plenty of reviews claiming the cgi was trash i actually enjoyed the cgi that was probably the best part of the movie the ocean cgi looked beautiful though i will say at times it was really dark and i don't mean dark in tonality i mean dark as in like it was literally tough to see everything going on because the lighting was just not there <laughs> i guess we, we we should talk about the more controversial topics with the black mermaid um to be honest you do notice it i mean hal berry's her performance isn't something outstanding that makes you forget and be like oh she is the little mermaid no it, it, it's literally basically a decent performance leaning toward the bad end like it, it, it was just barely passable with plenty of times during the film it's like everything feels artificial rather than a good performance and then like same time with all the other actors they actually delivered good performances but at times it really felt artificial cringy and in the end it was just really really tiring to watch there's a lot in this movie that does confuse you and it just and more more than a good movie it just feels like a racial show as in like oh look we're disney we're putting representation in an old show oh look we have a variety of mermaids here they have like one second of screen time but look we have an asian mermaid uh a, a black mermaid and like a mermaid from every different distinctive race oh my god we're showing great representation praise us watch this movie for the representation oh my god oh look at this uh we have this city we have a white prince who's adopted by a black queen oh look at this uh look at this entire city it's more racialized rather than uh, strongly white the only white people we see are mainly just people working in the castle yes i, I mean like Okay, no one particularly cares about this representation BS. I mean, we're just here to see a good movie and all this representation is, is doing is taking away from the original animation source work and makes you question, why are you making all these changes? They're unnecessary. It is not meaningful. It just means you're trying to recreate a good show for representation to try and pull in an audience. I mean, what are you doing? It, it makes no it makes no sense. It, and it kind of just makes you question everything about the movie. Uh, I don't want to say it's bad because, like, I I really liked uh, the butler dude. Uh, I, don't, I forget his name, but, like, uh, Prince, the guy who's always looking out for Prince Eric. I really loved him. Uh, so I loved his character for sure. Uh, I obviously love the bird. I, I'm forgetting all these names, but, like, the bird, though, it's like this bird's talking underwater. What the hell is going on? I get it's a, I get it's a animated, fictitious show, but, like, a fictitious movie. But, like, I mean... To some degree, you gotta understand, a bird can't talk underwater. It's gonna make everyone go like, what the hell is going on here? And then, I mean, we still have to talk about Flounder and Sebastian. Their CGI is 
yeah, I mean, Flounder literally looks like a fish ready to be grilled and they just plaster the face on it using one of those filters where you put the eyes and mouth on something. So that's what Flounder literally looks like and Sebastian the Crab literally looks, looks like uh, uh, Mr. Krabs from Spongebob came into the Little Mermaid in a live action show. Though I, I do feel while you never get used to Flounder, you really do get, you do really start to like Sebastian. He's really funny, especially with his Jamaican accent. He, I, I think that was probably one of the funniest aspects of the show. Uh, Sebastian was one of the better characters seeing uh, uh, Aquafina as the bird sing. That was, uh, well, a lot of people did hate it. I actually really loved it. Uh, all the songs in this movie are a vibe and beautiful to listen to. How Barry actually killed it. Her vocal performance was beautiful with the songs. She killed it for sure. Uh, the songs were all really fun to listen to. Under the Sea was probably one of the most vibrant songs to watch on the big screen with all its colorful colorfulness. Um, the other uh, the other songs which are just fading my mind right now, but they were also really beautiful to listen to. They were absolute fun to watch. This movie in general was just a pretty decent watch. It felt like a long, long rewatch. I mean, in the end, I do feel a little grateful to watch this show be uh, movie because I was never going to rewatch the original animated movie. And um, rewatching this movie makes you see it in a different light when you're like compared to four years old to 21 years old. You actually start to understand a little more of the subtleties behind this with racism and blah, 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 and all those deeper topics, which kind of sucks mainly because it felt like such a great movie to watch as a kid. And now you're rewatching it with all these deeper uh, complex themes into in, intertwined and you're like <sighs> but like i mean still uh the story is nice it's a beautiful watch uh movie uh if you have to watch one i'd say go watch the animated version it's far better uh this one it just feels like a trash dump i will say it's barely a bop i'd give it like a 60%? It's not that great unless you're like a super fan or really go like, ah, I want to watch this for representation. I'd say go watch an animated movie. This one's bad. Peace.